Like I told Daddy, we'll be lucky if we can swing this for under a mill. But what do I know? I'm just a kid. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the famous faces that popped up on Sex and the City before many of us knew who they were. His name was Jake. He was everything I was looking for that night. Number 10, Andy Cohen. In this episode, Charlotte decides to distract herself from her own woes by helping others. She volunteers to assist people with visual disabilities, but the coordinator suggests some hands-on training first. Let him or her lead you around blindfolded. Blindfolded? Yeah. Try not to take the blindfold off, no matter how uncomfortable you feel, and you'll begin to get a sense of what it's like not to be able to rely on your sight. So she and Carrie head to Barney's. However, when Carrie gets distracted, a blindfolded Charlotte ends up roaming the store solo. And I just got separated from my friend, but I'm sure she'll find me. Lumiere? Oh, no, that, that. Eventually, they meet up again in the shoe section, where Carrie's being assisted by none other than Bravo Big Shot and Sarah Jessica Parker's friend, Andy Cohen. He doesn't exactly speak, but he sure seems to approve of Carrie's taste in footwear. I swear I looked and looked, and then I thought, best if she finds me. I'm eating him tomorrow. Cute, huh? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Cohen shared that he also appeared in a season four episode, but it was cut from the televised take. Number nine, Carrie Preston. No, we definitely haven't overlooked the name connection here. But long before Mrs. Preston was even a glimmer in the writer's eye, the real Carrie Preston made a memorable appearance in this season two episode. Jeremy Fields. Oh, I'm sorry. This Madeline. Is Madeline Dunn. Pleasure. Well, thanks for bringing that by. We were just about to go out and get some dinner, so. Yes, did, did you want to join us? She plays Madeline Dunn, Miranda's interior designer, who she accidentally sets up with her crush. Who knows where life took this couple after their nuptials? It's amazing. It took her six months to find me an end table, but she can plan a wedding at the plaza in four weeks. Five bucks says that your end table lasts longer than her marriage. What we do know is that Carrie Preston's career has come a long way since then. You might recognize her as Arlene Fowler from True Blood or as Elspeth Tassioni from The Good Wife, The Good Fight, and Elspeth. She has also taken a turn behind the camera on a few occasions. Everybody ready? Number eight, Gabriel Macht. If you're a fan of Suits, you probably know Macht as the ambitious, wry, and hardworking Harvey Specter, a shark in the legal system. However, long before he donned one of his stylish suits, he played Barkley, the modelizer. Barkley, a notorious modelizer, was one of those Soho wonders who maintained a fabulous lifestyle despite never having sold a single painting. In a speech laden with misogyny, Barkley explains to Carrie what it is that attracts him to models, essentially likening them to the art he creates. Things? You call them things? Yeah. Well, they are things. They're beautiful things. And that's what my life's about, you know? Beauty. In fact, he even makes them subjects of his art in a grossly non-consensual way. Samantha later goes out with him to prove that she is just as attractive as the women Barkley typically goes after. Your friend Barkley? He's really been coming on to me. Do you actually think he believes I'm a model? Well, whatever it is, you don't want to go there. If you ask us, Harvey would eat Barkley for lunch. Number seven, John Slattery. Today, when we think of Slattery, it's likely as Mad Men's charming Roger Sterling, who enjoys that carefree lifestyle. However, do you remember his brief turn as politician Bill Kelly on Sex and the City? It all starts when he crosses paths with Carrie at an FDNY charity event on Staten Island. But you, you were tough. And what's with all those half points? Six and a half, eight and a half. What can I say? Sometimes a girl needs a half. Despite her initial hesitation, something clicks and they start dating. Can I talk to you about Proposition 114? What is that? You and me in the bedroom. Is that on the ballot? Well, it ought to be. I'd back it. It's fun as her. Whatever position you want. Their romance blossoms as she joins him on the campaign trail, but things hit a snag when a proposition puts a damper on the relationship. Slattery's expressed interest in revisiting the role in And Just Like That. Will he still be dabbling in politics? Maybe his new slogan could be, you're in good hands. I think it's, it's totally fine that that's what you're into. I've just, it's just never really been my thing. Oh yeah? Number six, Will Arnett. 
Remember when Miranda dates a guy she thinks has a rather quirky fixation? And just when Miranda thought she could read Jack perfectly, he opened an entire new chapter. No, no. Someone might come by. We could get caught. I know. She meets Jack at a bookstore, where they bond over historical biographies. They quickly hit it off, and things get steamy everywhere but the bedroom. You've got to get this guy in the bedroom and find out what's really there. I'm a little afraid to try. <laughs> He likes the threat of getting caught. What if being with just me isn't enough? Eventually, she discovers why, and it's cringier than she imagined. Just a few years later, Arnett would land the roles many of us know him for today, Joe Bluth in Arrested Development and the eponymous Bojack Horseman. He's not the only Bluth to appear in Sex and the City, either. Tony Hale, aka Buster, once played a photographer's assistant hired by Samantha to take some revealing photos in the episode The Real Me. Okay, Samantha. Tiger here has a variety of music choices to ease you into the shoot and help you feel more comfortable. Tiger? Yeah, I've got some Steely Dan. I'm comfortable. Number 5. Bobby Cannavale Bobby Cannavale has done it all – TV, movies, and theater. However, before landing his breakthrough role as paramedic Bobby Caffey in Third Watch, he played Adam Ball, a handsome suitor who, let's say, leaves Samantha with an unpleasant aftertaste. Honey, they don't call it a job for nothing. Now, having said all that, with the right man, it can be fabulous. <laughs> While their relationship reaches an impasse, Cannavale's star status rose. Come on, it can't be that bad. I'll make a deal with you. You try it. Fans came to know him as Will's boyfriend Vince D'Angelo in Will and & Grace and Jip Rossetti from Boardwalk Empire, two roles that earned him Primetime Emmy Awards. He also has a plethora of film credits to his name and has continued to tread the boards. Needless to say, his career has come a long way since the days he played Samantha's unappetizing beau. I'm fine with it. Number 4. Kat Dennings before she was serving sass to diner customers, scouting for secret gigs with Nick, or joining the Marvel Universe, Kat Dennings took her first professional bow as Jenny Breyer. Like I told Daddy, we'll be lucky if we can swing this far under a mill. But what do I know? I'm just a kid. We'll never get in sync. Jenny is a spoiled 13-year-old who ropes Samantha into planning her bat mitzvah. While she shocks the women with her PG-13 attitude, she also teaches them a valuable lesson about enjoying life and not trying to rush to the next step. Samantha had been resenting Jenny Breyer all this time because of everything she had. But then Samantha realized she'd had something that no amount of money could buy – a childhood. She may have only had a one-episode appearance, but she made every second count. Since then, Denning's career has soared, gracing both the big and small screens. Titles like Raise Your Voice, The House Bunny, and Dollface only scratch the surface of her impressive repertoire. Jenny! So ladies, is everything fabulous? It is now. Number 3. Elizabeth Banks when Elizabeth Banks appeared on Sex and the City, she could not have predicted her rapid rise to fame in both acting and filmmaking just several years later. Sweetheart, this is Charlotte. She runs a gallery downtown. Charlotte is my fiance, Catherine. Hi. Nice to meet you. You might know her from the 40-year-old virgin, but she truly left her mark in hits like The Hunger Games and the Pitch Perfect franchise. Now, let's rewind to her early days. She played Catherine, the fiancé of a man Charlotte hits on. As the two women chat, Catherine unwittingly shares some unusual dating advice. One of my girlfriends threw a party where all the women were asked to bring a man they weren't interested in. Somebody brought Bob. <laughs> <laughs> And the rest is history. This gig happened so early in her career that she's actually credited as Elizabeth Marisol Mitchell. Later, she changed her name to avoid confusion with another actress, Elizabeth Mitchell. Am I right, Gail? Oh, John, you're so right, everything else seems wrong. Number 2. Justin Thoreau Remember when Justin Thoreau played Stanford's obnoxious friend Jared? New York Magazine just named him one of the 30 coolest people under 30 in the city. Wow, what an honor. You know, if they were doing the 30 sexiest women under 30, I'm sure you'd go right to the top of the list. <laughs> You're quite the storyteller, aren't you? Carrie uses him as a palate cleanser of sorts after her latest bust-up with Big. Oh, that's not the character you remembered? Well, maybe you're thinking of his role as Vaughn the following season. A short story writer Carrie dates who, let's just say, it's not just his tales that have quick endings. She's also way more into his family than him. His family is like… they got charisma. 
Like Tom Cruise, they're the Tom Cruise of families. I'm pretty sure the family is supposed to be the obstacle to a relationship, not the attraction. Today, Thoreau is best known for his roles in Mulholland Drive, American Psycho, Charlie's Angels Full Throttle, and The Girl on the Train. He's also gained attention for his role as Kevin Garvey on HBO's The Leftovers and for his screenwriting work. Yeah, GQ called. Really? They want you to write something? No, they want me to wear something. It's so great to be a writer these days. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Eddie Cahill. You may recognize him from Friends, Miracle, CSI New York, or from one of the series' most poorly aged storylines. And before her, Leslie couldn't commit. And before Leslie, there was Mark. Is that a problem? Timothy Oliphant. The Deadwood and Justified actor played a 20-something-year-old with whom Carrie has a brief dalliance. Oh, you were in a dream as this beautiful unicorn woman with glass eyes. You coffee, me bathroom. Chandra Wilson. Before she was saving lives in Grey's Anatomy, she was supporting Samantha's right to put her cheating ex on blast. Ma'am, it's against city law to deface public property. This man said he loved me, and I caught him eating another woman's Carry on, ma'am. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Bradley Cooper when Carrie crossed paths with Jake, a wild party animal, little did she know she was mingling with a future top-earning actor. You need a light? His name was Jake. He was everything I was looking for that night. Single, straight, and a smoker. Cooper made his TV debut on Sex and the City, showcasing the charm that would later define his Hollywood career. Incidentally, Glee's Matthew Morrison is another now-famous face to keep an eye out for in this episode. Waiting for someone? Oh no, it's just me. Thanks. Anyway, the The Hangover, Silver Linings Playbook, and A Star is Born actor may have had a small role too, but it comes at a pivotal moment in Carrie's story. We couldn't help but wonder what she'd say if she knew she had passed on People's 2011 Sexiest Man Alive. Now that would make a great column. You know what, I gotta go home. No way. I'm not letting you out. Fine. Did you spot any of these famous faces, or did you spy someone else entirely? Let us know in the comments. Be sure and put your names at the door. Oh, thanks. So you'll be there? I'll do my best. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.